Hey, everybody. It is the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman and uh, the director of Why for Life. My good friend, Michelle Bauman is here. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing okay. It's it's been uh, it's been a week, but uh, that that still means we're kicking, and uh, that means there's stuff to do. Um, right. Yeah, another day of life, right? Another gift. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, God be praised for it too. These are sometimes the things that draw you closer to the cross, and so that's 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 a good thing too. Yes. Um. So we have been working our way through the Ten Commandments and life issues, and we we just did the Fifth Commandment, um, which is sort of the big one. But uh, we've been finding a lot along the way. The Sixth Commandment is always the uncomfortable one now, um, especially for a a youth podcast. Um, and so obviously the thing to do is uh actually talk about it. it it's mm-hmm. not going to get less uncomfortable by ignoring it. it it's it's sort of like the kissing scene in the movie when your parents are in the room uh, <laughs> the, the the less you talk about it the more uncomfortable it gets um and That's so the great. sixth commandment is you shall not commit adultery and, and our catechism kind of helps shape this uh I, I use the old one because it's it's a word that we we've sort of let go of but it's it's a really helpful one uh, we should fear and love god so that we lead a chaste and decent life in what we say and do and husband and wife love and honor each other and, and i like this word chaste because it scales um it lets us actually teach it to kids um, because a sexually pure and decent life is is true, uh, but it's already making me uncomfortable. And and chaste is one of those words where what if either now or someday in the future, God wanted you to have a healthy, happy marriage and the things that lended itself towards that, they are chaste. And the things that make it harder either today or someday in the future to have a healthy, happy marriage, they are unchaste. And, and that can be a lot, a lot of things, which we're going to start to get into today, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And chastity, chastity is for both male and female. It's not just for, for one gender. Right. Um, because again, the commandments are given to protect gifts, gifts that God intends to give and you nail it on the head. God hopes, uh, that the gift of sexuality will be uh, used not only now so that we might, uh, lead chaste lives so that we might be boys and girls, men and women who serve in the vocations uh, in good and godly ways, but also someday, hopefully, as husbands and wives, mothers and fathers, because we need good parents. We need uh, we need parents and um, and spouses that uphold God's word, but also because God wants to protect that gift of marriage. God wants to protect that gift of family. And so when even as spouses, uh, we are we we exhibit chastity. We are chaste uh, in in that we only um, cling to. Uh, and and participate in a union that's meant for marriage with our spouse. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, there's so many ways we could go. So I think maybe the first way is just, again, to look at that, that gift of marriage and how beneficial it is, not only for the spouse, but also for, for children, right? Mm-hmm. We know that uh, children who are, who are raised in homes where um, men and women where their moms and dads, their biological moms and dads are still together, they have the most, uh, they have the healthiest um, chances or healthiest lifestyles. They have the healthiest outlook for their future. Um, We see that um, children who uh, have the love of their mom and dad and that see their mom and dad love each other, that that love actually transfers to them too. So, So there's been lots of studies done um, on on kids who um, are raised in different types of families. And we see that actually biology and gender and marriage does matter. Um, mm-hmm. It matters for the health of the child. It matters for the health and safety, for the uh, intellectual, mental, emotional, and spiritual components um, of a child's life. And, and it is so wonderful to, to see too. And, and again, the studies bear out that when a child sees his biological mom and dad or her biological mom and dad loving each other, that child also feels love. Um, so what a, you know, that's typically we feel love when someone loves us, but to even witness a love between parents and a fidelity, a chastity between parents is healthy for um, a, a child. So so we know, again, these, these gifts, um, not only are meant for us, but also meant to be used for family. And gender is a gift, right? So in every vocation, um, we gender, we use gender, we work through gender um, to serve. So gifts 
are meant to serve and they're meant to be to used be used in service in our vocations. Um, so what are some of the things that um what are some of the things that. that prevent us from serving, mm -hmm. right? So let's talk about um pornography. I'm gonna jump yeah. right in. It's kind one. of the elephant in the room with this one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. So so we see that um a lot of studies show that pornography starts pretty young, or at least uh, the the introduction to pornography starts pretty young. Um, most studies will show that a that a, a kid will have his or her first introduction to pornography between the ages of nine and eleven, um, and this shapes how then we view our sexuality, how we view um, our our the gift that we're in that we were designed to use uh, to serve others. Um, and we know that it's not necessarily just a one-time issue, right? So maybe there's an introduction when we're young and that introduction has a physical scar, like a uh, an impacting scar on the brain, um, which then can um, be a temptation uh, later on. So we know that 70% of men ages 18 to 24 have seen or regularly see view pornography once a month. Um, we also see that women, and this is fairly recent, it's not just a male issue, uh, women um, between the ages of 18 and 35, 73% of them have viewed pornography within the last month as well. So, um, so we know that 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 chastity that God intends for us, that chastity that's supposed to um, protect the gift of marriage, um, we know that that's that's the temptations are great and it's not always being employed. And how does pornography affect marriage? Well, we know that um, couples that engage or one person that engages in pornography increases the risk of divorce. Um, if, if uh, it also uh, escalates the propensity um, for abuse in the home, it escalates the propensity for misuse of gender. Um, so for example, we've talked before about, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, um, go ahead. We, we've talked before about how we, we misuse gifts, right? And, mm -hmm. and a man, one of his gifts biologically typically is strength. And so when a man uses his strength, that gift of gender to protect and to provide for his family, that is a God-pleasing gift. But when he uses that strength uh, in a violent way, and unfortunately pornography escalates and often leads to um, a form of, of abuse, sometimes violent abuse, um, we know that that gift of gender, that gift of strength is not being used uh, to uphold life. So um, we know that pornography doesn't just affect the individual. It's not just a single person's sin, even though it's very easy to hide. It also spreads out into the family. Um, and so so in order to protect that family, in order to protect the gift of of marriage and family, we want to avoid um, the things that God God doesn't desire for us, as is made clear in the sixth commandment. Right. There's this thing that sinners do too, and especially in the midst of sin, is try and push off the consequences, push them further away and say that that couldn't happen, that won't happen. I'm years away from marriage and by then. So even just for today, um, what is it, what does it say that we are training our brains to look at the opposite gender as body parts instead of rational redeemed souls. What does it say then to how one day you will be taught to approach, even if you have not met your spouse yet, this this man or woman as a, a group of body parts that are either enough or not enough, uh, that, that you have trained your brain for years to to process this way, it's, it's going to make it harder to find the soul for the the gifts that that are supposed to actually point to the, the greater mystical union that is Christ and the church. Um, if we're going to start to teach our brain to, to seek pleasure this way, it, it's gonna, it, it's not a, a someday thing. It, it's a right now issue, even if you might be many years from marriage. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and hard, right. Hard wiring that brain or rewiring that brain is going to take time. Right. So, Mm -hmm. so we don't want to, um, we don't want to, if, if there's someone watching this podcast, we don't want to leave them, um, in a, in a state of despair, right? There is hope. Um, the, the rewiring of the brain does happen over time. Um, and, and there is forgiveness. Uh, God mm-hmm. still is at work, uh, in the, the lives of those who struggle with pornography addiction and in the lives of those who have, who have maybe, um, used it for, uh, for a while and are now turning away. Um, but one of the wonderful things is that God doesn't just um, doesn't just set us, leave us alone in that struggle, mm-hmm. but he encourages us to um, to recognize the other gifts that God has given us in our community, in the Christian community. Um, he's provided mother and father, pastor, teacher, friends that can help us in that struggle. And so um, I know that again, pornography is seen as such a secret sin, something mm-hmm. that, that we, um, that maybe we don't want to share. And, and, you know, um, isn't that exactly what Satan would want that we would right. struggle with our sin and not disclose it. Um, and, and, um, and really despair over it. Um, but rather what we want to do is bring it out into the open so that, um, we have the support of the Christian community and the forgiveness, the spoken forgiveness that a prof- pastor can provide, um, that will strengthen and uh, strengthen choices moving forward. One of the, the an, another big attack of the devil is is to leave you trying to measure this by your wins and losses, and especially with it with this sin because it is so easy to 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 access pornography. You mark the lose the losses a lot more than than the wins. Um and you are not given to do that as a Christian. You're not known by your sins or how many times you resisted temptation. You're known by your baptism. If this is something that you have struggled with and lost far more than you have won, here your baptism calls you holy and and worthy of love. Here it calls it you pure and, and and so free in Christ that you don't have to be burdened by past failures. You you actually get to strive now, not just to to redeem the past because that's already been redeemed. Jesus died for you. Your your sins are forgiven. That sin is forgiven. Now you get to struggle with the, the future so that because there, there is a, a way to, to fix the brain, there, there is a, a path towards repaving some of those neural pathways so that just it, it, because you have failed and, and sometimes even failed a lot, you don't have to mark yourself as a failure, but as a Christian redeemed by Christ. Yeah, absolutely. And those struggles, those struggles are very powerful struggles. Um, the way that God created us as, as beings that were not only physical beings and mental beings, elect- intellectual beings, but also sexual beings, right? Um, and, and that gift of sexuality, that, um, that gift that's been designed for marriage was, is a very strong uh, emotion or does create very strong emotions and strong ties. And so, um, and that's good. We want those strong emotions and strong ties to be um, woven with our spouse so that um, that marriage, again, can last, uh, so that marriage can benefit not only the spouses, but also the children, the gifts of marriage and and society uh, as a whole. So, so yeah, um, these are these are good things. Um, we just we want to use them in good ways. Uh, right. as God has has designed them to be. Um, you mentioned the struggle, the temptation. We've talked about that. If it's okay, I want to talk about one more temptation. And that mm-hmm. is maybe uh, we see it a lot in, to, in today's society, um, this this temptation to um, to claim whatever whatever gender uh, we we desire, right? Um, and again, um, God's gift of sexuality, his his gift of gender, is established um, when we when we were created in the womb, and that gift um, is designed then to be used in service toward others um, throughout our lives. Whether that's even before marriage, right? When we are born as a as a girl or a boy, and we are in our teen years, how does our gender, how does our gift of sexuality, how do we use that to serve others? Well, there are some unique gifts that God has given to, to each gender. Um, and, and these are like cellular gifts, right? These are things that, 
that that can't be changed. We see that that women um, inherently are are typically more relational. Um, they're typically not as confrontational. Now, again, there are exceptions to every rule, but those ex exceptions don't um, don't change. Uh, our overall gender. They don't change our cellular cellular makeup. Um, and and we see that that men in general, um, you know, are a lot better at taking risks. Um, they are much more physical and and very often, um, like I mentioned earlier, much stronger. Um, and all of these gifts, we can use even in service today. We can use um, to to share with others, but when we when we um, mistakenly believe that we can transition into some into something other than what God has created us to be, we mm -hmm. are in effect throwing those gifts away. We are we are saying we are devaluing those gifts. But the truth is, the world needs both of those gifts. So I think of, and I'm sure many of the people watching this podcast have seen uh, Dylan Mulvaney um, and his celebration, right? For the last 365 days, he has um, been, he has been living as what he would call a woman or a girl. Uh, and he just had a celebration this last week for his, for his 365th day of girlhood. Um, and again, it's interesting that he calls himself a girl rather than, than a woman, Um but his his portrayal of womanhood, his portrayal of girlhood is is a caricature of of girlhood, right? So it is it is the physical outward um, portrayal, the 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 dressing like, the wearing of heels, the um using maybe some classical mannerisms that we attribute to to women. And yet, um those the the gifts of womanhood, the gifts of girlhood um, are, are the things that God intends for society, the gifts that he needs that he, mm -hmm. he uses to bless society, um, not the portrayal of, of um, womanhood, but the actuality of womanhood. It's funny. Um, it's not funny. Um, it, it, that's the word we use when we're uncomfortable. Uh, it's got to be... I guess just to start waking up in the mirror and looking at yourself and and recognizing that you are not enough when it comes to what is typically your gender to to not feel like you are enough of a woman to not feel like you are enough of a man because like you said the those those cells don't change but we don't always fit inside of those expectations it becomes very easy to make this a quest for enough what we call in, in Lutheran church a quest for justification we, we we make this always, how can I be enough? And, and so when you don't feel like enough of a man, the temptation becomes to to say, well, what if I am not and I can be enough of a woman? And so when we typically see people transition, you're right. It, it's it's sort of a, 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 it's a 1950s vibe of of womanhood that the feminists get real upset about for everywhere else. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a stereotypical view that uh, most people would call toxic masculinity. Um, and in all of it, it's it's sort of the idea of how can I be enough? And and for us as Christians, it's not a question of do you feel like enough? Because the law is going to show us that none of us should feel like enough. If you actually look in the mirror and say, I am, I am, I got this under control. I am enough. You're not looking at the real Ten Commandments, or you're not looking at the real you. But to to sort of recognize then inside of this, our justification is not going to be found in something that we do or something that we can change about ourselves, but rather our justification is found in Jesus. You might not feel like enough of a man. You might feel like you are out of place in your own body. And, and the point of that is just simply to recognize it's not the resurrection yet. It, it's not the resurrection yet, not just as a hope that one day this will go away, but actually as a sign that there is there's present and, and, and meaningful hope here and now, because it, just because you don't feel like enough, it doesn't mean that you are marked by that. You are marked by the cross where Jesus was enough for you. The, the idea of Christianity it, it, turning you once was lost. Now and am found once was blind. Now I see once was not enough. Now am is, is 
it's evil. It's demonic because the, the struggle that all of us have with sin, be it a sixth commandment issue or any of the others we have talked about before, or any of the others that we will talk about after are all actually addressed the same way. This is all justification that, that our worth, our value, our enoughness is found not in, in what we can change about ourselves, but in Jesus. And when we set that aside and we try and embrace the things to make us outwardly look like enough, it does feel like a sham. Every bit as much as Jesus called the Pharisees whitewashed tombs, we see men dressing up stereotypically as women, even though the, the women themselves would say that is not a fair portrayal of what it is to be a woman and, and vice versa as well. When we when we see women then uh, portraying some of the, the vilest aspects of, of what men have done in the past under the guise of being masculine, it, it's, it's not only not loving towards neighbor, it's definitely not loving towards self, but but worse of all, it, it, it's, it's running from a place where you can actually be called enough in, in Christ. And that doesn't make those, those shortcomings feel like they'll go away, but rather it, it, it means that all the more we just we need to keep hearing them because one day the resurrection will happen but until then we still need jesus yeah and and we as christians get to carry that message we get to carry mm -hmm. that hope uh that that things will be solved in the end but also even even now that christian compassion for those that are struggling yes. right those struggles for many for those who uh you know especially are struggling with gender dysphoria those are real struggles um, and, and we respond to them with compassion and with affirmation that they are loved, that God did not make a mistake in them, that they were planned before the beginning of time, and that that God is a good God and desires good things for them. And so, um, you know, we we encourage them to to um, continue to be fed by the things that God God desires to give the the gifts of of communion, the gifts of His Word and sacraments, but also. Uh, the gifts that he provides in the world through, you know, good Christian counseling, through friendships, through through um, people that that walk with us and help us bear the crosses that we will bear in this world. Because the truth is, we will all bear crosses, and we will all bear crosses uh, that that um, are connected to 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 all the commandments. Um, there's no one that's not going to break the sixth commandment, right? right. Uh, in some way. And so we walk um, with fellow sinners and we encourage each other as a, as a fellow sinner um, that this too shall pass, that God gives us the strength in this day um, to, to <clears throat> move forward, to make, to, to, if possible to make those right decisions and and when not to receive the forgiveness and start again so. absolutely yeah. i don't i can't think of a better place to end michelle bauman uh, the director of why for life uh where can we find more of your stuff check us out at whyforlife.org or on instagram snapchat or tiktok at lfl why for life thanks so much for joining us have a great day thanks you too